It's the centerpiece of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. It's Red Bud. This national brought to you by Red Bull. And of course, momentum on the line as we kick off the second half of this championship tour. And what a place to do it. Great track, great friends, great racing. We got it all right here at the Race Rex Motocross Show, presented by Motosport.com. It's Adam Tiantrillo. We're here on the start, and you're watching the Racer X Show. Let's get to 450 Moto 1. We're going to do our squint test here. They're the Stewart brothers. See, it's a little bit sunny, but it wasn't as hot as it's been here in the past. There's Justin Barsha looking to get another one of his hole shots and maybe mix it up with the Ryans. But instead of surprise, Moto 1 here, Josh Grant on the JJR Toyota Yamaha has the hole shot. Jake Weimer right with him. Hasn't had a good start all year. Then you've got Pennard and Dungey battling for third and fourth and no sign of series point leader Ryan Villapoto. He was outside the top ten early. Andrew Short battling with James Stewart. And then old school Josh Grant emerges. He starts pulling away from Kennard and Dungey. But uh-oh, look who's already up to fourth making moves. It's Villapoto headed toward the front of the pack. Here's how he did it. First, he had to get around the 32 of Malcolm Stewart. And later was working on Short and James Stewart to try to get up to where Dungey was. And he finally would get there. Now we know the story, Villapoto's so fast early in the motos, it sometimes takes Dungey a little longer to get going. That'd be the factor here. Villapoto gets around Dungey before Dungey can get Kennard. And then Villapoto gets Kennard for second. And now only Grant lays in his path as he's trying to produce a come from behind moto victory. Dungey's still battling Kennard. Eventually Villapoto takes the lead. Kennard gets Grant as well. And Dungey's gotta try to pass both riders just to get into second. Here he is around Grant. And Stewart starts to find some fire, trying to keep Dungey and Kennard in sight. Took Dungey a long time to get around Kennard. He was riding very well on the Honda Muscle Milk machine. Finally, he would get to the number two position. It's Kennard in third, and then he would go down, drop back to seventh. So that's going to move Stewart up to the number three position. And he kept Dungey in sight until Dungey was out of sight. His bike stalled. He couldn't get it restarted with the electric start. He couldn't get it started with the bump start. His moto was over. Zero points scored for Dungeon this one. Josh Grant's going to inherit third. Best moto of the year for him. Stewart, second. Best moto for him in quite some time. And Villapoto keeps on trucking. He rode darn strong in this one. No matter what had happened to Dungeon's bike, it was doubtful that anyone was going to stop the RV Express. 450 Moto 2, Dungey with 34th in Moto 1, has to hang out in the smoker section. Bad gate pick for him. He's going to have to make it work for the outside. Michael Lessie also crashed out of that first moto, so he's got his work cut out for him. Stewart goes to work. He's going to edge JGR men, Grant and Brayton, for the whole shot here. Hey, if Stewart was still on JGR, they'd be 1 2 3 right now. But instead, it's the Yoshimura Suzuki man setting sail, riding well, getting away from everyone else. Here's Villapoto, and somehow Dungey pulling off a good start despite the outside gate. Villapoto gets to second and has to go to work on Stewart, and it would not be easy. JS7 was pretty darn strong on this day, plus he's been in a lot of battles in his time. He knows how to hold his line, hold his position. He didn't see Justin Barsha in Moto1. He had a first turn crash, came back to finish in the top 10. Quietly fourth in this second Moto. Look at Stewart and Villapoto going at it. Villapoto bumped off the track, watch this. Yeah, Enduro crossing his way back on and doesn't even lose much ground. He's still right behind Stewart despite that. And then Dungey, you can see, starting to circulate. Next lap, Stewart makes a mistake heading into the sand whoops. Villapoto on the gas, able to get by and takes over the number one spot. Stewart says, all right, I'm in set. Where did Dungey come from? Makes the quick pass on the inside of Stewart to take over second. And by the way, I want to give a shout out to Mike Brown, the 40 plus man, now an off-road star. 15th in Moto 1, 19th overall. Well done, Brownie. Just inside the top 10, you have a good battle here. Brayton, Kennard, Alessi, and Reed. Kennard would eventually move his way up into the sixth place spot. And then look at Stewart. Started to find his grooves, hanging with the Ryans. It was darn close down the stretch. In fact, it's about no more than two seconds to lead for Villapoto for most of this one. Dungey knew he had to try to get some of those points he lost in the first moto back. He gave Villapoto all he could give him. Oh wait, he's got a just married sign in the back. No, he actually loses roll-offs, and then with two laps to go, he crashes hard. Was actually trapped under the bike, was down for almost a minute. That puts Stewart in the second. Villapoto says, where'd everybody go? He takes the win, Dungey recovers for third. Rough day for him. Josh Grant ends up on the overall podium and gets to greet a huge crowd along with Villapoto and Stewart. It's always cool down to the podium at Redbud. 
And let's get rid of the 250 class. The Ripa, Jimmy Dakota, is back in action. Here is Ken Roxon looking for a good start in the first moto. He's been struggling with the starts lately. I'll tell you who is not struggling with the starts. Will Hahn has now taken four gate drops so far this summer and has four MotorcycleSuperStore.com hole shots. But bad news for Wilbur and everybody else. Eli Tomac has a good start as well. He quickly goes around the number 19 and is in the lead in the 17. No sign of Roxon here. Didn't get the start he wanted. Tomac goes to work. Trying to get away from Han. Jeremy Martin holding off the Red Bull KTM duo of Marvin Muscan and Ken Roxon. Then Muscan gets around Martin. That'll put him into third. Then he goes after Han for the number two spot. Han, besides the start, didn't have the moto he wanted. He'd eventually go back to ninth place. There's Muscan in second, Roxon in third. Han now under pressure from Martin. Jason Anderson, but Anderson would break some front spokes and not finish this one. Eventually, the battle is between the KTM teammates for second. Once Roxon has cleared Han, he's clear to go after the 25. But don't just take my word for it. We'll send it down to Georgia Lindsay so you can get a little on-track atmosphere from Redbud. So the whole shot sign behind me was taken by Mr. Will Han on the first lap. We're about lap five right now. And the race is being led by the number 17 of Eli Tomac, who was three seconds a lap faster in qualifying. Let's see if he can take this race for the win. Three seconds a lap faster. Yeah, she's right, he really was. Tomac was pulling away. Roxon had got around Muscan for second, but wasn't able to make a run at the 17, who just rode this track like he owned it. He's also been darn fast the last couple weeks. Bud's Creek, Southwick. Tomac starting to feel it. And now Martin on the move, starting to put pressure on Muscan. The kid, not intimidated at all by the credentials of the top three, he wants a podium. And he goes after Muscan. By the way, shout out to Cole Seeley, who finished fifth in this one. That's his best motor of the year. Tomac, oh man, he was looking good in this moto. How good? He was even able to clear the finish line while going in slow motion. So Tomac takes the moto victory. Roxon second. Muscan just hangs on for third over Martin. Moto number two. Adam Cincerullo is going to grab a great start here. Spoiler alert on the 292. Wheeling off the start. Not able to hold the inside, though, like he'd like to in his first turn. It's going to be a Geico Honda. Is that Will Hahn? No. This time it's Zach Osborne with Martin off to another good run and Cincerullo on his hip, second and third. Martin able to fend off Cincerullo and go after Osborne. So here's Osborne leading at the beginning of lap two. There's Martin back there, and now it's the KTM teammates of Roxon and Muscan. What happened to Cincerullo? Uh, we're going to show you right here. Rookie mistake here on this first lap. Catches an edge, pulls the front wheel to the right, and he goes down. And then you go down the first lap. you got a lot of work to do. He would eventually work his way all the way back up to 15th. That's arguably the best riding he's been in since turning pro. What happened to the Geico boys? Well, Tomac gets around Osborne after Roxon takes the lead, and then Tomac crashes, and Osborne runs into him. Just an accident. Leaves Roxon with a nice, sizable lead, and he would continue to extend it. Battling behind him, still a solid performance by Martin. He's taking advantage of a couple other guys going down. He'll take it any way he can get it. You got Muscan, and now Bogle behind him in third and fourth. Muscan putting the attack on the 77 of Martin. The veteran against the kid. So a couple things to watch. Roxon's getting away. Tomac's trying to work through traffic. And Muscan is still trying to get Martin. You also have Bogle and Osborne behind them. And finally, we get the number 17 of Tomac back on the radar. He was ninth after his crash. He'd start picking his teammates off. Bogle, Osborne, and would eventually get within sight of that Martin and Muscan battle for the number two position. Muscan finally gets around Martin. So it's a KTM 1-2, but not for long because the Frenchman stuffs the front end and goes down. So Martin passes Muscan. And Tomac slips by into third as well. Frustrating day for the Frenchman. And then finally, Tomac has a shot at the number two position. He's going to make the pass on the 77 of Martin, take over second, and even make a late charge at Roxon. Got a 13-second lead down to about seven, but it just wasn't going to be enough. Tomac rode very, very fast on this day, and Martin rode really well. But Ken Roxon was going to be the star. 2-1 scores are going to bring the Red Bull KTM rider to victory at Redbud. Here are your points. Tie for the day between Roxon and Tomac with 2-1 and 1-2. So it's still a seven-point lead 
as we take a weekend off and go to Washougal. And now we talk to our very happy podium threat, Jeremy Martin. And we're here with podium finisher in the 250 class, Jeremy Martin. Uh, Got to feel good. Awesome breakthrough here. Yeah, it feels great. You know, I've been coming here as an amateur, and then to be able to get it done and get on the podium and get a podium, actually get a third overall in my first rookie rate, uh, pro debut here is pretty cool. Yeah, and just talk about the day because you had to back it up with two motos, and I mean, some big hitters like Marvin Muscan, you were right in the mix with those guys. Yeah, I got a little lucky. Marvin went down in the second moto, and then Eli and Osborne actually tangled together before uh, before the whoops. So I got a little lucky. Luck was on my side today, um, but I hung in there, and I never gave up, and I walked away um, on the podium. And uh, you said actually working on some riding technique stuff at home is partially responsible for moving forward here? Yeah, I think so. You know, like working on stuff during the week, technique, and just trying to constantly evolve myself and make myself better, you know, try to try to work to be, you know, perfect. Okay, now we got to go to break weekend off, then Washougal, and then Millville. You're setting up good for this. Yeah, I'm excited, you know, to be able to hang out with the family and then to sleep in my own bed mm -hmm. and then get on a golf cart and then go to the pro pits. It's going to be a pretty cool thing. Make, you know, make an omelet in my kitchen and then head out you know, to the pro pits and hang out with everyone. So I'm for, I'm looking forward to it. So you don't need a motor home. You just have a home at the track. Yes, yes. I can literally um, see everyone coming in from my bedroom. Wow. Okay. And uh, what do you do during a break? Just keep hammering down? Yeah, hammer down. Try to get better. Um, I learned a lot of stuff from getting it, um, getting in behind Ken and Eli today. Those guys are fast, um, and they're really solid for the whole moto. So just got to make little improvements and just try to keep building. And finally, what's the atmosphere over here? You got some young guys. You got Kyle Cunningham has been around. Just take me through what it's like over here with this team. Um, the, my Plash Metal Militia team is really good. You know, um, you got Cooper Webb, who's a rookie, phenomenal amateur rider, and then you got Kyle Cunningham, who's proven to be very fast at times, and he's a you know he's a veteran in the lights class, and he knows what he's doing. And then you got me trying to trying to make a splash and try to do good as well. So everyone works really good. The bikes making big improvements. I, I really enjoy riding it, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. Positive steps here. That's it. We'll be off next week. We'll be back at Washougal. That's your Racer X Motocross show brought to you by Motorsport. We'll see you at Washougal.